Ooh, let me ask you first, Rob, because it feels like, in a lot of ways, you're playing a very different character, or at least a different side that we didn't see, you know, six months ago. Totally. And now he's playing a much darker side. And you're doing a great job, by the way. Thank great you. Job. It's so good. Thank you. But, but talk, talk about that and just shifting. You can just leave it there. But, like, just shifting to this darker side. And, of course, he's he loves her, but it's also there's a lot of stuff going on in his head. Yeah, well, you know, um, what we just talked about earlier as well is Ben had all the the backstory and like the genetic makeup and the and the life experience of what easily could end up as a, a serial killer or a split personality or however you want to call it and uh, you know even though he had those things he had finally found a place in his life and, and in his world where he finally found a home and a, and a true love and, and a family per se and a, and a family environment that he's never experienced before and um, you know, it, it was it was threatened, and it was threatened in a way where he tried to bottle it up and bottle it up, and we all are, are uh, you know, guilty of doing that in one way or another in shape or form of life, and yeah. sooner or later there's a breaking point. Not everybody breaks the same way Ben Weston breaks, but uh, <laughs> because of his background and his ex life experience, when they presented this to me, um, it only made sense, and I just, it opened up my eyes to him, and it, I, you know, I fell in love with Ben, and I'm very protective of him now, and I, I me too. That's great, right? I mean, do you, was it? Do you think the kind of trigger was the night he overheard um, Chad and um, Abby talking about the fact that they? Yeah, well, I mean, together? I think he, you know, he, he, he knew, he knew, he knew she was being a snake. But until we saw it slithering in the grass, we weren't positive. But uh, yeah, I think that was the that was the trigger, and then it went on for a long time of that, you know, bottling it up and giving her moments to, you know, it wasn't like he just. Yeah, he just snapped. Hour. It gave him. I, it, ben gave her many opportunities to come clean, and you know, lie after lie after lie. Finally, there was an explosion point. You know, and then he started framing chat. And Kate, talk about it from Abby's point of view. I mean, there. I mean, she could have. I mean, there were times where you know, Ben was sort of acting kind of strangely, or you know, he was tracking her mm -hmm. with the GPS. Mm -hmm. I mean, just talk about it from Abby's point of view sure. and, and how how the everything developed. Well, first of all, I just want to say I, I think it's so wonderful that the fans are responding so well to the story. It's really um, so great to see. But Rob has done an outstanding level of work, and I think he himself has seen, has every time he surprises himself, and it's just going to continue that way. Like the story is so great because. He was so committed and I was so committed and we didn't judge the story, we didn't judge the character, and we kept coming back to the same thing every time. Like, as, you know, individuals and playing our character and as the story, like, discussing, like, what, let's be as truthful as we possibly can, as exposing, as raw as we possibly can. What would happen? I mean, we did a ton of research at this. And, you know, you can look at it two ways. Like, oh, it's not relatable. I'm not like them or whatever. Or like Rob just said, you know, find the thread of what makes them snap. And what then the commonality good. of like, where does that live for me? And so with, um, with Abigail, you know, you look at her history. She's come from one failed relationship after another. She was a virgin until she was 20-something years old. She doesn't have any girlfriends. She lives at home with her mother and has a very um, uh, codependent relationship with her family. And all of those things, you know, lost her father. Before that, felt like she was always abandoned. All of those things culminated into her feeling like, and being a mockery in a town, too, you know? She just wanted love and wanted it to work out once and I think that this is the first relationship she had after her father died mm -hmm. and her father was such an important presence in her life that that was another big element mm -hmm. for me was like I just wanted to do my dad proud I wanted to get married to this man who treats me well and on paper Ben was great you know and he came in and he accepted me for EJ and all this stuff and little things started to happen and as I'm totally guilty of it too I can't speak for anyone but myself but it's human nature. Oh, I'm not going to think about that. Oh, no, I did notice that thing that was a red flag, but, like, it's nothing. And you just keep going, and that's how every woman gets themselves into that position where you go, crap, where did, how did it get here? And, you know, I'm not, she's not guilty, but um, that's sort of, you know, the web that we've created. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. Well, and now that she, now that Abigail's being held captive, because right. they're in the cabin right now, <laughs> What are her thoughts about Ben? I mean, she probably knows that he's a, he's a, he's got some mental issues, maybe. But does she still love him? Because you can't always turn that love up, even if something awful is happening to you. Do you think there's still love there? Not. Of course not. Yes, of course. I mean, first of all, I think that there's 
a sexual chemistry and a sexual when you know someone that intimately and you're in a relationship with someone you could tell yourself like no they're wrong this is whatever but when yeah. it comes back down to I mean I, in my experience when it comes back down to that sexual element you wash everything away because you're like oh like when he kisses me like I believe it or we love each other like in that way like it's still the same so then you just deny everything else so that was the choice that I made for Abby and there were definite moments like especially when we were in the room and he told me about the tracking app you know yeah there was a moment where I remember saying walking away from him he begs me to forgive him it was a great scene Rob begs me to forgive him and I walk or Ben and I walk away and take my phone and say take it off my and I remember feeling when we were taping it so overwhelmed by the fact that I felt trapped as the character and I knew that I was just going to give it to him and he was going to like delete it that should be the least of it you know yeah, he should have been yeah, saying yeah. screw you like you made me do this and I should have been saying the same but instead we're both so dependent on each other because we're so screwed up individually yeah. that it was like a, it was a I think that that was the start of it does that make any so, sense? No. Yeah, you know? it totally makes so, sense, yeah. And so I shouldn't have been surprised, you know. Then he grabs my arm, then he... So yeah, it all started coming together. Yeah. But he was, he was right, you know? Yeah. So. Wow. Well, I like that through all this, Ben still had time to go to the gym because when he first started, it's like... <laughs> He's still making it to the gym fight. Well, you gotta, you gotta blow that steam off somewhere. You gotta blow oh that steam God. off somewhere, right? It's like a statue. It's ben, ridiculous. Ben, ben, you know, he had a lot in his mind, so he spent a lot of time. And he's confessing it's, with his shirt off. And he's, I know. You know it's like I, trust me, we had a lot of discussion about that where I'll be like, but, like, do I have to have my shirt on? <laughs> I tried to fight it, guys, but oh, no. they, yeah. they thought there was something. Gotta give them well, you know what? I get it, it was an interesting choice. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Well, I tried to combat it, but then after we really talked about it, there's something, um, I mean, you know, you chop it up a million ways, but there's something primal about being shirtless and, like, bearing your openness. And when that, as soon as he said that, there's an animalistic quality, something primal. Yeah. There was no question. I stopped questioning it. It made sense to me. And I liked it. From that point, I liked it because I felt there was it was just open. Everything was... Like being exposed, including my body. <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, we, we, real quick, we've been asking everybody if you remember your first scene, like what on the Together? show. No, just oh. your first scene when you first joined the show. Like, do you remember what that was and who it was with? Yes, I remember. You Yours wasn't first. too long. Well, mine was recent. I'll, I'll take yeah. this one first, just because okay. mine was more recent. Uh, yeah, it was the very last scene of the day. I waited there from seven in the morning, and I had ended up having my scene at like seven thirty at night with <laughs> none other than than the Queen, Christian Alfonso. I thought he was gonna say me, and I was like, what? what? No, my, very, my very first scene was with with with, with Christian uh, being interrogated for the murder right. of Nick Fallon. Yes. And then uh, immediately I did a phone call, which ended up being many of those phone calls with uh, you know Michelle Strauss, who is my sister. Yeah. Um, in 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 the. Uh, Faithful Park with the bench. Okay. Oh, that was my first one. Oh, right. My first yours? scene, yes, of course. Okay. My first scene was with um, Missy. She, uh, Jen had just had open heart surgery, and I flew home from college to come, like, say, "Oh my God, Mom," because my dad was gone. And I flew home, and I opened up the door, and Doctor Dan is there, who saved her. And I remember <laughs> Gary was there at the time, and I, we were doing the scene, and I opened up the door, and then he had directed me to come over and give him a big hug. Thank you for saving my mom. So I saw my mom, and then I see Sean Christian, and I give him this big hug, and I'm like, thank you, and they don't say cut yet, so we're both just like, oh, we're <laughs> hugging each other, and then all of a sudden we finished, and Missy was like, okay, that was great, and then they were like, hold, please, and we just kind of like waited for a while, and I was like, did I do something wrong, and Missy was like, no, no, they're just waiting, and I was like, okay, and so Sean and I are kind of like looking at each other, and then eventually Gary came over and was like, um, Kate, can you not have chemistry with your mother's boyfriend? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. He said, how do you They were like, maybe just don't like throw your, and I was like, right, I, yes, okay, got it. So then our That's hug so was like funny. very, and since then, Sean and I were really good friends as people, and I don't, we have no, that it's not there, that oh, element, but okay. whenever we're on camera together, there's like a table between us, or we're really like, it's something like palpable in us. I don't know, it's That's great. Awesome. Okay. That's awesome. Thank great. you so Thank much. You.